So tell me a little bit about your your history, everything, I know a little bit, but everything leading up to Lucid Press, because Lucid yeah. Press has been since 2017, but everything before that, you're, you're an entrepreneur. You are someone who likes to build things. Yeah, well, I'll even go further back for what it's worth, because I grew up in Alaska, and I did not oh. think about entrepreneurship there at all. I, my dad was a librarian. He'd been a farmer before that. And so I wasn't a kid that, for whatever reason, grew up thinking, like, you know, for sure I'm going to go start my own business or do the next thing. That seemed very distant. I thought I was going to go to school and study history and become a lawyer. I'd had a couple of brothers that had done that. Mm -hmm. But I think my whole career took a change that I didn't foresee when my freshman year at college, I came down here to go to BYU. I got a job at a startup that was called Digis. They were a wireless internet service provider at the time. Yep. And there were about five of us in the office. And there was supposed to be a guy to train me on how to do sales. But he disappeared on like the <laughs> second day I was there. So I said, well, like, whatever you can figure out then is going to have to be what we do. Right. And it was fun. It was really, really fun. I learned a lot. I, I uh, served a mission for the LDS Church in the Czech Republic for a couple of years, came back and worked there again, and it started to grow, and it became, uh, in time, the largest wireless internet service provider in the country. And to, to see that was really inspiring. So I changed my major from what I was planning on in history to advertising, got from sales into marketing, and really started thinking like, hey, you know, if these guys who I've known all along can do this, maybe I can too. And I had this idea that, again, still felt distant, like maybe sometime I'll start my own company. And it ended up happening a lot faster than I would have guessed. And I think it kind of shows a pattern for me of jumping into things that, where I didn't really know what I was doing <laughs> and uh, then having to figure it out, yeah. which uh, w was a blessing in disguise. I launched my first company that was all on my own in 2009, not long after I graduated from college. It was uh, an uh, agency. At first it was kind of a CMO for hire and then it grew into being an inbound marketing agency. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of didn't know how hard it would be. I didn't know all the reasons why businesses should fail. And that's why I got started. And from there, I know that you, you passed the rings. Like that company still exists, even though... Yeah, so I sold it. Yes. Uh, I ended up having a partner come on, a guy named Dave Bascom, who would be another good person for you to have on here sometime. Yeah, Dave. Dave's a great friend. Yeah, yeah. Super bright guy. Was the founder and former CEO of SEO.com. And then uh, somehow I convinced him to join me and my, as my partner at Fit Marketing. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we sold that, I focused on a little software startup called Quizzer. <laughs> yeah. And familiar with Quizzer. Yeah, yeah. It was really a good run there for three years, and now I'm at Lucid Press. Yeah, and you were telling us a, a great story about Quizzer, the whole the blue versus gold dress and how Quizzer yeah. played a pretty pivotal role in that. Well, that was one of the fun things about Quizzer is you always dream that something that you're involved with actually gets in front of a lot of people, that it gets used. And Quizzer was really satisfying in that way. I think the last year that I was there, some 365 million people uh, interacted with one of our polls or quizzes and it's because they have this viral nature and so mm -hmm. what quizzer was all about is intelligent interactive content so you know a quiz or an interactive experience that uh, might help you learn something about yourself or the world so for example you know which Disney princess are you was a classic example yeah. one of those like light quizzes somewhere more substantive and helping you make an important decision but uh, there was a quiz on the Gawker website about this dress the night it took over the internet and I, I was actually speaking at a conference in New York had met with the Gawker executives or some of them that night they went to dinner and then this thing started to take off and I started getting pinged left and right and they're saying like this is getting to be really big, you can't let this go down. And we, it was very early in our startup life, so we had to you know, call back to the office. We had all these engineers coming in. They slept on the couches in the office that night as we spun up all these servers to try to you know, keep up with the demand. It was just tens of thousands of people that were hitting this thing every second. Mm -hmm. And uh, it did. It ended up being the biggest, biggest article that Gawker ever had. Of course, they later died. They're over, so I think it probably was the biggest that they had in their history. And... Uh, it was a wild ride for us, but really validating in that sense that, like, for a moment, we felt like we had the internet on our back. You did. And I don't... Did you see gold or did you see blue? I always saw gold. You? I always saw blue. Of course, you're wearing a gold dress today, right? <laughs> okay. Touche. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, I love that. I love that story. We're a big fan of Quizzer. We used it a ton here at the agency. I think so. it for a lot of our content we created yeah. because it was such a great way to get engagement and to have a lot of fun with content marketing. 
yeah. and eventually, you know, throw in calls to action. But we'll yeah, that, that, that was the thing that I think was underutilized with it actually is that um, the power of quizzes was huge in getting engagement, holding people's attention more than most any other format, and then um, allowing for a conversion event and some really meaningful data to be collected. <laughs> actually, after I left Quizzer and everything came out with Cambridge Analytica and these other groups that were doing things that were kind of nefarious with data, I got a lot of media requests for people wanting to know what did Quizzer do with data. And I didn't really talk about it because one, I'd moved on and was focused on what we were doing at Lucid. Uh -huh. And two, we were definitely in the lines of what I think is moral and ethical and legal and all those things. But I just didn't want to be in every story that was talking about, you know, right. all these things that have happened with data. But the truth is, if you're a business and you want to know about your audience, there's usually a much smarter way to go about it than just sending out a survey because people don't like to take surveys, but they sure like to find out something about themselves and quizzes help them do that. Yeah, give more.